So I've got a question for you on this Monday morning. Can you be self-actualized and also dissatisfied with your professional life? Can these two things coexist? Hey, good morning. Oh God, that was so weird. <laughs> Meeting people while I'm filming myself. Talking to myself on a bicycle. Happy Monday. I'm glad to be here with you. Good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeffo. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. Look, folks, I don't know anything. I'm just out here talking about filmmaking, talking about literature, talking about writing, how I'm uh, working to evolve to be a better filmmaker, writer, and human being. Thank you so much for joining me on the ride. I'm a little off because we have stopped to get a photo. And look at that. I just saw an osprey dive into the river, grab some breakfast, and take off. How do you like that? All right. This one is for Miss Lynn. She had this idea for this shot, so we're going to try to get it for her. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, <laughs> the last four episodes, I think I've taken the same picture at the same angle of the same bike. She's like, ugh, we're bored with that. I was bored with that. We're all bored with that. I'm bored. I'm going down to so-and-so's with the El Toreador. <laughs> that was uh, Miss Fitzgerald in the film, uh, what is it, Midnight? Midnight in Paris? Woody Allen's film. It's a fun film. It's about uh, a guy who who is stuck in his life and he thinks that life in the 20s in Paris during the modernist era when a bunch of expat American writers were hanging out in Paris and I guess painters and artists, musicians, I guess a lot of folks were hanging out in Paris. The early 1900s and the film is about he ends up going back in time and how he thinks it's the best time ever but he meets people in that time that think that the previous era was the best. And I think a lot of this is because when we have perspective on an era, we know what it is, we know what it was. We can say what the 1920s Paris meant to many different groups of people. So a lot of times we think, wow, that must have been an awesome time, right? I don't know, I'm pretty happy with this time. And that's what we're gonna get into this morning. Not about how great a time it is that you can just be <laughs> going through a midlife crisis, possibly, riding a bicycle, talking to yourself, and then recording it and throwing it up on the internet. <laughs> hey, good morning. These are all things that are easy to do now. How's your ride? How was your weekend? You have a good weekend? Yeah? Get out on your ride a little bit? I hope so. I feel like weekends are great times to catch up on my ride, but it's also time to kind of crash from getting over the output of the daily ride, which is kind of what I'm talking about today, I'm trying to work through with you. Hey, good morning. I have a friend, Brandon, who challenged me. I'm sorry, did he challenge me? He said, hey man, would you consider exploring this idea because he and I work together and uh, so I vent a lot about how I'm feeling what what in America we would call I would call professionally dissatisfied it's not that I don't like the work I love the work I do I've been doing it for almost 20 years accidentally fell into a career there the design work creating content, creating mean ways of communicating ideas that connect people with other people or with products that we do in the IT department at the university so that people have an easier time with technology. And I love that challenge. I love how do I 
bring people into an easier way of the day-to-day -day through technology. And my job is to communicate that either through video or through writing, generally throwing it out on websites, put it in emails. I love this work. I've been doing it for a long time. Back in 2001, started designing websites for other people. Got into this real design practice. And that kind of manifested into, we got to work with a lot of arts organizations in, the, in Northern California in the early 2000s. Building websites for them at a time where small organizations really couldn't afford it because it was still fairly esoteric. If you didn't know, a little bit of HTML and some browser compatibility things, you couldn't do it yourself. Good morning on your left here. And that work translated into eventually, I was in charge of the website on the content and branding side of things, not the technical side of things, but the, how we use the website to communicate our goals at the University of Alaska Anchorage. And all the social media, their podcast program up there, which was really all Seth's doing. He was the guy that made most of that happen, did most of the recordings. I confess, I did a lot of the recordings too because I loved it. Okay, tiny wall ride. Whew. We are really loaded down on the bike today, so gotta be careful. Hey, right behind you, brother. Hey, good morning. But my friend Brandon, come on, dude. That was totally rude. I know, they're just trying to do their job, but didn't even move, whatever. So Brandon, my friend, said, would you consider looking at this, exploring this idea how you say you've got a really good life, and yet you say you're professionally dissatisfied. And by that, let me qualify what that means, because, <laughs> because I am so grateful for the day job I have. I work with good people, really good people. I get to do interesting projects. I get to do po projects that continue to challenge me, which is super important to me. But I don't feel like I have the same kind of impact that I used to have when I was in more of a strategic and decision-making role. I was also doing a lot of volunteering when we lived up in Alaska done some volunteering here for the Boise Bicycle Project, of course, which I love. But I don't feel like my overall life, my overall work effort is contributing to the world around me in the way that it did, in the ways that I found to fit in in Anchorage. And so I would, that's what I'm calling professional dissatisfaction, which really isn't about my profession and it's really not about my day job. It has to do with the fact that I'm in transition from having a day job to trying to create some creative projects that hopefully one day I could live off of those. Now, of course, uh, let's see. Hey, good morning on your left, lovely people. Now, there is no guarantee with that, and there is no telling when that is going to happen. Although, I want to thank you. There was a few of you last week that went out and got the uh, very popular <laughs> On Your Left t-shirts from the Morning Ride Pedal Podcast. What is it? MorningRidePodcast.com? From the podcast website. I really appreciate that because when people buy those t-shirts, kind of evens out the cost of the website and the hosting to get all of this into iTunes and to get it up onto YouTube. Kind of balances out those costs, so I'm not having to put that out of my pocket myself, and I really appreciate that. Also appreciate you folks for helping me spread the word about the podcast. It is a weird thing, I know. 
But if you like weird things like this, and you think someone else might, you can share the link with them, either through iTunes or through my website. I'd really appreciate that, man. Again, I really enjoy doing this. I love being on the ride with you guys. It helps me so much that you're there for me every Monday and Thursday to be on the ride so that I can talk through these things as I'm trying to work through them. So, Brandon asked me to explore that idea of, well, you say you've got a good life and a somewhat fulfilled life, but professionally you're dissatisfied. We're gonna say professional, meaning that I have, over time, developed skills that are meaningful to people. So that's what I mean by professional. I don't mean my day job. I don't mean the accidental career <laughs> that I fell into because it wasn't a career when I started this. There was no such thing as a web designer. Well, I mean, kind of, but not like it is today. And definitely not now that I'm more of a content producer, which is, I really, really enjoy that. <laughs> so, I'm not a psychologist by any means. And uh, I had one psychology class a million years ago. So I'm gonna bring up Mr. Maslow and kind of go through the chart and describe kind of my process. And the thing that I learned this weekend when I was going through this idea that Brandon asked me to go through is that Maslow's chart is interesting how I feel like I can be in multiple places on it at once. And I think this is what Brandon was getting at. So on the bottom, of course, is the basic psychological needs. This is just general water, food, and shelter kind of thing. And then the next layer on Maslow's chart, of course, is the safety. That is that I know at this point in my life that I'm gonna have food, water, and shelter. So like in my 20s, early 20s, back, or mid, early to mid 20s, you know, I was working in arts organizations, <clears throat> I was playing music, I was directing music, uh, music director. I was doing a lot of things, a lot of little jobs, odd jobs on top of my 40 hour a week job. And generally by the end of the month, I didn't have money for the last two days, so I didn't eat a lot. <laughs> I'm not complaining folks, I actually kind of remember it fondly. It was kind of a cool time to... The only thing that I really had to worry about was being creative because I didn't have money to do anything else, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> hey, good morning on your left here. Well, look at all these happy people out on the bikes today. How great is that? It's, it's like 55 degrees right now, folks. That is unusually cool for mid-August in Idaho and Boise. So then after we get through the the basic psychological needs and the basic safety needs, once these are taken care of, then we get into kind of the belongingness. That is, do you have a community of people around you? Do you have friends? If you're, if you're wanting to be partnered, do you have a partner? Are your relationships loving? By the way, we had an episode a couple weeks ago and I was talking about the people around you dictating your success. And, that assumes that you can choose the people around you. Sometimes we don't get to choose them. But do you have folks that you can say, hey, I saw this beautiful thing today. And they're like, wow, thank you for sharing that with me. It's like one of the greatest things I think we can do for one another is share things that inspire. Or just be able to talk to a friend and say, hey, I'm wrestling with this thing and you've got a friend that can help you with that. Hey, good morning. Ooh, baby. There, edit, edit. 
Good morning. Wow, it's going to be loud here for a second, folks. Sorry about that. And then we're already here, and I have been so distracted by all the folks. I have no idea what they're doing over there, but they have been working really hard on that old building. Maybe cleaning out ducks? I have no idea. Maybe retrofitting it? Putting steel bars in through those bricks? Because of seismic... I don't know. I have no idea what they're doing. So then Jennifer and I got together, and that's been a lovely thing since, well, 98, I guess. 99 is when we really kind of started getting together, and 2000 when <laughs> she was like, I'm moving in. I'm like, cool. We lived in that little apartment in Napa. That was awesome. So then I moved up personally and moved up the Maslow's order a little bit. I was part of a community. I was part of several communities there in Napa. And then, uh, then I had a job that uh, at the library that allowed me to do web design for part-time. And then I had a day job that was like providing me like with a regular income. Then we were working at Music in the Vineyards. Uh, that was like a four month gig every year for a few years. And so at that point, I really started a feeling a self, a, a sense of accomplishment. Like, hey, as a human being, I'm contributing to the world around me. The, the work effort that I put out has a positive impact on other people's lives. And like, folks, that's something that's really, really important to me. And then of course, you get up a level and it's like, you know you're doing good work. You know that you're not, not that you're perfect. Of course you screw up a lot. <laughs> um, but you're doing good work and then you get into those higher levels of being able to think strategically, not about your life, but about how your work impacts the others around you in more specific and more precise ways and maybe how you are finding ways to put you yourself into that work. So of course that's the self-actualized top of the Maslow's chart there. Oh, I love that Massey bike. Massey? Massey? I don't know what it is. It's an Italian track bike. They're really lovely. I just love the geometry on them. So. In Alaska, we had a lot of friends, had a lot of close friends, a lot of writing friends. Um, we were parts, Jennifer and I both were parts of different kinds of communities. Um, we volunteered in ways. And when we moved to Boise, we bought this house and it took us, you know, like about 18 months really to get it to where it was like kind of fully functionally livable. The first nine months, we, didn't even, we weren't even able to live in the place. Thanks again, e m for letting us live in your basement. <laughs> um, and so I wasn't doing any volunteering. I found this, uh, a job, my job at the university started out as a technical writer position and I was doing that and that was great. It was perfect for where I was and what I needed at the time. Um, Cause I couldn't have done the uh, 60, 70 hour a week kind of position again and remodel the house in a new town. So I got to thinking about these levels and I thought, you know, am I, am I, am I still feeling that level of self-actualized that I felt in Anchorage? And I think that's what I mean by when I say that I feel professionally dissatisfied because I don't feel like my work effort gets out into the world like it did up there. I don't feel like I'm having the, the same kind of impact. And I guess in my mind, I make the assumption that that impact has to continue to grow as my personal level of achievement or age or experience tends to grow. So that's really been working on me. And so when I'm out with Brandon, it's like, you know, complain about the things of the day job that you got to complain about because you go crazy otherwise. You know, just a silly bureaucracy of working in a large organization. It's not particular to the organization that I work. I'm not complaining about that at all. I'm just saying, you know, you get frustrated with things at work at your day job. So right now, Brandon, I think, 
And thank you for bringing this up, man. I really appreciate that that you trust me as a friend enough to say, hey, I think you need to look at this. I don't know what your intention was. <laughs> I know he's a designer. See, Brandon's a designer, and so half the, most of the time when he asks these hard questions of me, I think he's doing it so that it's like he sees how silly I'm being about something, and it's like he knows that if I talk through it that I'm going to be like, oh, well, that's silly, and then it just drops all together. Anyway, Brandon, thank you for bringing this up, brother. So at this moment, as I am trying to transition, as I was saying, into my creative work, being able to fulfill the day job position fiscally, we are, uh, I'm finding that I am having less of an impact. And part of that is that I don't know what I'm doing, like with the filmmaking stuff especially. I'm having to learn and grow with all of that day by day. So uh, I, I am not as, um, you know, in that, I'm not able to provide the, a community with the same kinds of expertise that I was able to before. Does that make sense? Folks, we have arrived at the office. So I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna finish this on Thursday. I know that's horrible, but um, it kind of got long and weird. And so um, we're, gonna, we're gonna finish this up on Thursday. Folks, thank you so much for letting me ride with you this Monday morning. Brandon, brother, thank you for asking the hard questions. I appreciate that, my friend, very much. I cannot wait to ride with you on Thursday. I hope that you have a fantastic week. I hope that you get a chance to be on your ride, whatever your ride is. If you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle, because this is the only ride we get, folks. The only one we get. Glad to be on it with you. <laughs> See you on Thursday. <laughs>